Ever wonder what a hacker could do if they had access to your machine? I was just as curious when I first began my career and it really opened my eyes seeing what they could do. Now, of course, there are security products that can help you detect and protect yourself from these attacks. But as technology evolves, so does attackers and they can get pretty creative. Some background about myself before I jump right in. I am a digital forensics and incident response consultant and have been in cybersecurity for over five years now. In other words, that is a fancy way of saying I look for bad people. <laughs> From time to time, I help my team with security awareness training and they wanted something more to showcase during their teaching. Specifically, they wanted to have people see behind the scenes, so to speak. And I thought that was a great idea. So I decided to create what a successful compromise will look like from the attacker's point of view. And I thought, why not I share that with you? To set up the scenario, let's just say you received a team's message from your coworker named Johnny. And Johnny said, hey, here is the invoice sent by the client XYZ. So you go ahead and you download this file. So once you download it, this is the file that you currently see. You go ahead and open that up you see another file called invoices. So you open that and you should get a big window saying Windows protected your PC. This should start sending some warning signals to you, but some choose to ignore it and run it anyways. So let's do that. Click on run anyway, and nothing really seems to happen on your machine. But in the back end, by double clicking that invoice file, you had successfully established a connection back to the attacker's machine. Let's flip over to the attacker's machine and take a look. Now, I won't go into details, but there are some couple interesting things that an attacker could do if they have access to your machine. Let's start off with a keylogger. I'll type in key scan. A keylogger will allow an attacker to capture what you are typing on the machine. So for example, if I were to go back over to the machine, open up a browser, and let's say I am interested in Bank of America. I will click on the logon and I'll enter in my user ID, which will be Bob. And I'll enter in, this is my password. Click on login. And again, you don't really see anything on your end. But if we go back over to the attacker machine, and if I were to run keyscan.dump, I can now see Bank of America and the username Bob with this is my password which is pretty interesting. The next thing I want to show you is called screen share. This is where an attacker can watch what you're doing on your computer. So I'll type in screen share. And just like that, I'm streaming what the user is doing on their machine. I'll type in my DFIR on the victim's computer and I can actually see it. Now I am fully aware that the resolution is not the best, but you can see the screen nonetheless. If an attacker wants to watch you over the webcam, they can do that as well. For example, I'll type in webcam stream and you should see me right there. The last thing I wanted to share is the possibility of searching for sensitive information and downloading them. For example, I know a lot of users like to create a file called passwords on their machine and an attacker can easily search for that. For example, I'll search a file that contains the word password and then I'll hit enter. Scrolling all the way up, we do see a passwords.txt file in which an attacker can actually download that file. So let's go and do that. And to download it, I just simply type in download and I've downloaded that file. It is on my desktop right here. I can just double click it and I can see the contents of it. And the attacker can download anything pictures, documents, videos, it's completely up to the attacker. It is a scary world out there and you might ask yourself, how do I protect myself from this? The good news is that there will be a lot of different warning signs that you will see before and after you downloaded a file or when you are trying to execute the file. So don't ignore these warnings. If you aren't sure, ask. And if you don't have anyone to ask, you can always ask me. Seeing the actual extension of a file is a good idea because one of the common ways an attacker could trick users is to masquerade a file, making the users believe that they're opening an Excel file or a PDF. 
but it turns out to be an executable. In this example, the file that we executed was named invoices.xlsx. This is a file extension for Excel. And if we enabled file extensions by clicking on the view tab at the top, and then go over to file name extensions, click on that, we can see the actual file extension. This file has a file extension of .exe, which is short for executable. This is a quick way to identify potential malicious files. If you are expecting a PDF document or even a Word document, and if you have the file extension named checked and it has .exe at the end, you don't wanna execute it. If you're worried about people spying on you from your webcam, you can take your laptop and throw it out the window. I'm just kidding. You can invest in those laptop camera covers or you can use duct tape. If you notice a light on your webcam and you're not using it, you know something strange is happening. Saving the best for last, always, always, always have antivirus enabled and updated. The default Windows Defender does an amazing job so you don't really have to purchase a third-party antivirus solution for personal use. In this example, I actually have Microsoft Defender disabled, which is your antivirus. And if we were to turn it on, this is what would happen. So I will search for Windows Security, and we want to select the first option. And you notice how it says Turn On under Virus and Threat Protection. I'll go ahead and click on Turn On. Once antivirus is enabled, after a couple seconds, it should start picking up the malware. And if we go back over to our downloads folder, we no longer see our invoices file that we downloaded. This is why it's extremely important to make sure that your antivirus is one, not disabled, and two, always updated, as this can detect and protect you from common malicious files. The point of this video is to help you be more aware of what could happen if you are the type of person that loves to download anything and everything from the internet, blindly trusting files and live life dangerously by having antivirus disabled for some reason. It is a scary world out there and if you do see warning signs, don't ignore them. They can save you from being compromised. And that is it for the video. I hope you found that informative and pretty interesting. Feel free to share this with others that you might think would benefit from this video because the more people that are aware of this risk, the better I can sleep or I mean, <laughs> we can sleep. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.